Welcome to electron line. The other type of improper integral is the type where the function is not defined at one limit, the other limit, or somewhere in between. So here the limits are from 1 to 4, and notice this integral, or the integrand, is not defined at x equals 1. And so we have to deal with it in a special way. Now notice that this is what the 1 over the square root of x function looks like, and this is what the 1 over the square root of x minus 1 function looks like. It simply moved over one unit to the right. Notice that x equal 1 is an asymptote for that function. So the best way to deal with it is to rewrite it as such. You can say that this is equal to the limit as t approaches 1 from above, because it's between 1 and 4. And we then can take the integral from t to 4 of dx over the square root of x minus 1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to first plug in the limit t and then allow t to approach 1 from above to evaluate the integral. Now we can integrate this by probably rewriting as follows. This is equal to the integral from t to 4 and write this as the quantity x minus 1 to the minus 1 half power dx. And this we can easily integrate because the differential of what's inside the parentheses is indeed dx. So this becomes equal to, now we have x minus 1. We add 1 to the exponent, becomes positive 1 half, divided by the new exponent, and evaluate it from t to 4. But of course, we still need to put in the limit as t approaches 1 from above. Now, simplifying this a little bit, this is equal to the limit as t approaches 1 of, we'll put the 2 in the front and like this, so this will be 2 times the square root of x minus 1 evaluated from t to 4. And now we can go ahead and start plugging the limits. We still need to keep this because we haven't plugged in the limit yet. So this will be equal to the limit as t approaches 1 of, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 times the square root of 4 minus 1. Minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 2 times the square root of t minus 1. And we'll put brackets around that so we can see that this limit is actually good for both of these terms. Now we can go ahead and allow t to go to the limit to see what we end up with. So this becomes equal to, now this is of course not affected, this becomes 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2 times, and instead of writing t, we allow t now to go to 1, so it would be the square root of 1 minus 1. Of course that's equal to 0, so this term disappears, and we end up with 2 times the square root of 3. So that's the technique that we use when we have a situation where the function is not defined at the one limit, at the other limit, or anywhere in between, and then that's how we deal with it.